Shalom amigos, I know I'm over a month late for that weekly update. I apologize. Also apologize that I'm not appearing in a video. I was about to, I had everything ready, and then I found out my camera needs batteries to be charged. And I'm not about to delay this video any longer, just because of uncharged batteries. So, that's why I'm not on camera. As far as what I've been doing, namely school, as previously mentioned, it always comes first. So that's why, that's the main reason why there's been such a long delay in the making of this video. I'm sorry. But, of course, not completely inactive, as you might already know. I have been mostly testing out Arch Linux as I am on the verge of switching to that, and equally as mostly making special effects for Awesome Reloaded as more projects are coming in. Yay! As far as the tutorial I promised uh, on the video editor, I don't have enough time to do a whole tutorial like I was planning on, but I do have enough time to give you maybe weekly, maybe monthly, I'm hoping weekly, but it might be monthly depending on school. One plugin from Blender and showing you some different ways that it can be used. Which doesn't sound like all that much, but open your mind, I shall show you how, and things will actually pop up like, hey, I didn't know I could do that. Anyway, onto the video. This is not me, clearly. This is video taken from one of the main guys of Awesome Reloaded, and cameraman, and director, and so. About the Blender Sequence Editor, blue strips are video, light green are audio, purple are images. And effects are brownish, but we'll get into that later. Right now we're not even going to open up one of the effect things that are in here. We're just going to look at the options that are already available. There is more than you think. Trust me, trust me. For example, we have our opacity. My wallpaper! And back. And of course, with every single one of these, or just about, I think everyone, you can press I to insert a keyframe, go forward a bit, change it, and press I again. Just like in Blender's 3D mode, you can insert keyframes. So, very useful, very good to know. Oops. My bad. Okay. In our sequence editor, we also have different channels. The channel you are on depends on the kind of stuff you want to do. More on that later, but moving on. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, you can cut these, click and drag on the arrows to make them bigger, smaller, longer, shorter. We can also put on a stride frame here in case you don't want to like when you load it and it's all the way over here, you don't want to drag it all the way over here. I've done that a few times. So, start frame. One. Easy as pie. Strip input. This is where we can actually go elsewhere and say, I want to load something else. But I don't want to load something else. I want to load that. So, our MPEG pre-seq is right there. Stream index as well. Keep it at zero. Image crop, which I'll be honest, looks more like a stretch at the moment. But there's a reason for that. Blender Sequence Editor will actually automatically take whatever footage you put in it and stretch it out to what the re whatever resolution you have. Currently, I have it set to the default 1920 by 1080, set to 50% of that. If I press image offset, then you see. Now you see, now you see, look at that. The crop was actually working, and we see the image in what it's actually supposed to be like. I really could have used this information in my previous video, which had Whitney Houston at the end, rest in peace. Because I did the long way, I'll explain what the long way is later, since that will actually become useful in the future. Something I forgot to mention, we have different blend types. Actually, I purposely didn't mention it until now, because currently, our background, that was me, but our background is black, with the image in its actual resolution, the video, is right there. If I set it to alpha over with that picture right beneath it, you see why this kind of stuff is useful to know? We also have all these other options, overdrop, multiply, gamma cross. Alpha under, in case you have the picture on top. 
subtract it's actually a pretty cool effect add it's also pretty cool by default it is add cross of course if you have alpha over and you don't have image offset you won't even tell so bear that in mind we can also trim our duration here whether it be from the end or from the start but doing it here will actually leave the starting frame stationary trim duration soft which appears to be disabled for me for whatever reason I'll figure that out later <laughs> we have our video strobe here which just say I want to push the frames just a little bit forward you can do that we have our flip options which will have more use later on when we load in plugins I'll explain later we have the option to play the video from backwards to forwards and to start the interlace for higher quality we have our saturation here and our multiply which is basically our brightness options although the multiply is showing through the video because of how I had it set to alpha over. Bear that in mind. Makes this thing more interesting, huh? Pre multiply, which is, if I remember correctly, it is specifically for RGB curves. When you have an alpha already set, so like if you have a transparent image that you're trying to key in. You can do that, and you can set pre-multiply there, so that things appear in a higher quality. I'm going to set that back. Convert float, which converts the video, or whatever you have selected, into float data. We have our color balance options here, which will actually allow you to do some live, or real-time, video type editing. We're not video type editing, uh, color correction, live, color correction. That's actually a pretty cool effect right there. Of course, you can time all these together so that you can do bloom type effects or fade to dark. There are other ways. I'll go about that in the future. Of course, we can invert these right here. So, up next is the proxy timecode, which is used when you have older computers like this one which I probably should have enabled this from the start this will actually play your video only in the render preview this thingy in a smaller quality than it actually is so that you can actually get real time you have JPEG quality here this is the resolution of your video this will not affect your final render it's very useful stuff here For images, it is basically the same. In fact, I think almost exactly the same. Yeah. But. Then we have the audio, finally. Same thing, we can get different audio if we want. We can do caching, so that our audio has greater quality. Draw waveform is a very, very useful thing. Like if you're trying to sync up your audio to a bang, Audio has a bang in it, you don't know where. Draw waveform, really, really great. And draw waveform and com combined with audio scrubbing means that your things will be in sync. If you time it, of course, but they really, really help. We have our volume settings, which also help. And again, we can hit I, go forward, change it, hit I again, it will change. Same thing for pretty much all of these. Pitch, which I will warn you, if you're trying to change the pitch, it will also change the speed, whether it's higher or lower. So bear that in mind. Pan is basically the same thing as the video strobe. You can, it will play the audio further or backward in time, depending on your settings. And of course, trim our duration. And one of the cooler things about this is that for every keyframe that you've inserted, 
like say I'm going to select the video choose my color balance I say that looks fine but let's have it no normal at first maybe just a hint of blue combined with some saturation I'm not even sure I'm doing this right anymore <laughs> Alrighty, so, I like that result, and I'm going to insert keyframe for all of these. Because I want to go ahead a few frames, like he's slowly becoming dangerous. Look at that. And if I want the change to be more sudden, or subtle, or whatever, there are actually curves right here, ways to control set options how cool is that so more control to you and of course they can be moved if you like set that too early or something So, but you know more now than you did before. A lot of useful stuff in here. Honestly, I didn't even know all of it. I wish I did when I, like even last week's video. Not last week, last month. I'm still sorry for that. I apologize. I apologize deeply. Um, what else is there? Oh yes, something cool that's also useful. If you like have video footage exactly where you want it, but you want this to start exactly at the frame here. And like if you're zoomed out, you have a lot of video files, you can't really tell. And of course you don't want missing frames. Blender will actually allow you to put it pretty dang close to the video footage you'll see it goes red like it doesn't want to be put there so it will actually put it directly behind it or in front of it wherever it is you're putting it so that's pretty cool and finally one thing you're going to want to do in case you ever make a whole bunch of changes is hit the refresh sequencer button this will make sure that all your changes are actually in effect actually had problems where you change something and then change it back and the previewer shows like there's one frame that looked like how it did before hit refresh sequencer and it will fix that it will show you accurately what it's supposed to be like based on what settings you currently have it in so that's it hope this video has been informative hope you've learned so much i know i did just going through this and going through the blender wiki <laughs> thank you for watching thank you for subscribing I shall see you next video which will probably definitely uh, have switched to arch by then which means I shall have to make a new intro hmm again see you next video